Hey everyone, I'm Kay Sagan, and you know what girls are near and dear to my heart and also kick a ton of ass? Well, that would be today's Superman analog, the Powerpuff Girls. So the Powerpuff Girls began as a 90s cartoon with the shtick being a trio of adorable schoolgirls that were also high-flying superheroes with the traditional range of Superman-type powers. The show began as a short that Craig McCracken did while at CalArts called The Whoop-Ass Girls. When Cartoon Network decided to launch their own original programming after its early days as the graveyard for Hanna-Barbera cartoons, McCracken dusted off the concept. Renamed The Powerpuff Girls, playing up a slightly more adorable emphasis over the original short, it was one of the original launch titles for Cartoon Cartoon, the IP testing ground alongside Johnny Bravo, Dexter's Laboratory, and some less successful shorts that didn't go on to series. The girls were a hit, though, and quickly went to full series as one of the premier shows on the network. It developed their backstory as laboratory creations of Professor Utonium, who combined sugar, spice, and everything nice. Plus, the secret ingredient, Chemical X. It's a great superheroic nod to the classic rhyme. The series struck a comedic balance between big action and lighthearted kindergarten antics. I mean, this is the key twist. They were so young. Like, bedtimes were a thing for them. Recess was a factor in their lives. It was adorable. Let's roll! Uh, uh, uh. Now you girls know better than that. What do you say? Teacher, may we please be excused to save the world? Yes, you may. They also quickly gathered a whole host of eccentric villains. Some were goofy, like the Gang Green Gang. Others were menacing, but none as iconic as Mojo Jojo, the twisted genius ape that was created in the same laboratory accident as the girls. The series even got a movie that acted as a prequel, delving into the origin and their first encounter with Mojo Jojo. The movie was more of what made the show great, but with better animation. I remember excitedly seeing it in theaters with friend of the show Alan Kistler and loving it. And while the show eventually ran out of steam, it did have a lasting impact. There have been specials in recent years to test the water for interest, failed attempts at revivals, and for a brief period, Ace, from the Gangrene Gang of all things, joined the Gorillas as bassist. Yes. Those gorillas. Now, each girl had a distinct personality. Blossom was the leader, a classic overachiever with a bossy streak. Real big sister energy. Bubbles was the sweetest and most happy-go-lucky, though the most dangerous if enraged. Lastly, Buttercup, named as such because the other girls had personalities that spoke to their names, and this one also started with a B, was the aspiring action hero. She was the tomboy looking forward to the rough and tumble life of a superhero. The girls would face all manner of adversity with heart and courage, taking down their foes with super speed and strength. For the most part, the girls had identical powers, although there was small permutations, such as Blossom temporarily developing freezing breath. You also each have your own special, unique abilities, like Bubbles being able to speak Spanish. Oh, so here's a fun aside. The girls had a particular animation style, what with the nubs instead of hands and oversized heads, but that was unique to them. In the rest of the show, everyone else was designed as more realistic humans. This was highlighted in one episode where Buttercup's mind was swapped with Professor Utonium's, and she didn't understand how fingers worked. Hello? What is it, Mayor? Professor, your hand doesn't work! They were an amazing team, and their show was a pure delight. You could always count on the day to be saved, thanks to the Powerpuff Girls. However, next time we'll talk about a superhero who, while also a science experiment, wasn't designed to be kid-friendly, but more to appeal to, shall we say, an adolescent audience. But until then, stay super, man. Hey, this is the part of the video where I thank you for watching. Please do all the YouTube stuff, like, subscribe, leave a comment. It really helps these videos get seen by more people, and I just really appreciate it. But thank you for watching to the end. Thank you for being a part of this all, and I hope you have a great week and a great Thanksgiving, if you're in America. And if you're not, I hope you just have a great week anyway.